And welcome back to the Arc Arena here on the campus of Baruch College. It is the second game of our CUNYAC Game of the Week doubleheader between the Hunter College Hawks and the Baruch Bearcats. If you're also just tuning in, it is the Battle of Lexington here at the Arc Arena on the campus of Baruch. Alongside Jamal Chapman, I'm David Justin. We're on our second game of our doubleheader. If you're just tuning in, the Hunter College Hawks women team beat the Baruch College Bearcats 74-43 in the first game of our doubleheader, but the slate is wiped clean, and it's the second game between Hunter and Baruch. The 5-17 Hunter College Hawks, 3-10 in the CUNYAC, are facing the Baruch College Bearcats, 17-4 overall, 11-2 at home, and most importantly, undefeated here at the Arc Arena, Jamal. Glad to be alongside you for what should be a great matchup between these two teams here in the Battle of Lex. It's definitely going to be a great matchup out here. If you guys can look in the crowds right now, students are fall falling into the Arc Arena. The stadium is getting packed. We're going to have a great game this evening. And most importantly for the Bearcats to right the ship, coming off of an old overtime, excuse me, an overtime loss to Brooklyn College. And Baruch led by their usual uh, big three which would be William Sixsmith, Andre Harris, and Bryler Page. Brew coming off the, a tough loss at Brooklyn College, losing by five, 65 to 60, and an uncharacteristically unca poor shooting night for the Bearcats, going only four of 30 from downtown. Yeah, it was definitely not a great night for them as in regards to their shooting percentage. But, you know, just to have, you know, tough nights by William Sixsmith, but still be in the game down by five, it goes to show you that they could play good on the defensive end, but other players can step up. Although they came up short, the Brook Bearcats have an opportunity to right the ship and get back in their winning ways. And Baruch, like you said, really going to – it's always a great turnaround. Only only a few games between games, and they have a great opportunity again against one of the poor teams here in the conference, the last place Hunter College Hawks. And Baruch right now really trying to solidify things as they're 11-2 and two in the conference. Of course, that top two seed gives you the bye, Jamal, and how huge is that for the Bearcats? It's definitely huge for the Bearcats, and they want to get that bye because that game, the next game they're going to be right here in the Ocarina if they get that seed. Yep, just announced the semifinals will be at the higher seed, so Baruch gets that bye. They will have a semifinal matchup here on what will be a week, two weeks from yesterday on the 20th. But before we start proceedings tonight, we have a couple of special balls, uh, basketballs to give out for the two players in the last two weeks that just got to the 1,000 point mark. First is William Sixsmith, the 23rd player ever to get to that plateau, followed up right there by Bryler Page becoming the 24th in back-to-back -back home games. And a great honor for both these players, both seniors, and both really bowed their time to get to a starting job and really solidified it here in their senior year. No, nah, it's definitely a great honor for both players. You know, they were on many teams together, have battled, made, made, made deep runs into the playoffs, you know, you know, played in championship games together, and definitely had a lot of great memories here at the Arc Arena. So it's great to see players like Bryler Page join the Thousand Point Club you know, right after William Sixsmith did it a week prior, you know. These two guys have played so well for the Bearcats, and you can see all their hard work and effort has put them into this illustrious club here. And a very nice touch as William Sixsmith, Coach Alisi, and his father all standing there taking a picture. Now Bryler and his family with Coach Alisi will also take a picture, and it's just a great moment for both of them to beat thousand-point scorers. And be on that acclaimed list. Their names will go on the the banner that we have on the far side of the gymnasium probably as soon as the year is over. So congratulations both to William Sixsmith and Bryler Page. Great players for the Bearcats, and most importantly, great players who went out on the court and balled out for the Bearcats, you know? They're definitely players who are going to be missed, but always going to be cherished in the Bearcat family. And they're going to be big tonight. Bryler Page coming in averaging over 13 points a game. William Sixsmith averaging over 12 and a half. But let's talk about William Sixsmith for a second. The last month, maybe struggling a little bit from the floor, floor, excuse me, and not a be none better example than that game against Brooklyn going one of 16 from downtown. Yeah, it was definitely not the night for William Sixsmith. You know, he definitely would like to see that turn around a little bit here in this game. But, you know, one thing that William Sixsmith has had here during his time here is that green light.
to get it up and put up his shot from the three-point line. So I'm not surprised that he just kept letting it fly. You know, hopefully one would drop, but it didn't go that way that evening. So quick rebound, and now um, right, we'll get right into our starting lineups. First, for the Hunter College Hawks, starting at guard, number four, Dayuda Barretti. Excuse me, Dauda Barrett. My apologies on the pronunciation. At the other guard, number 12, George Keener. At the third guard, number 14, Gio Gabidong. At the forward, number 23, Nolan Brusahoff. And at the other forward, number zero. Actually, it almost seems like they're going with a four guard lineup because Danny Fusco, at only five foot nine, is going to round out the starting five for the Hunter College Hawks. And for your Baruch Bearcats, it'll be the usual starting five that we've seen the last probably half a season. It'll be Jack and William Sixsmith in the backcourt alongside Bryler Page with Andre Harris and George Smith Jr. in the front court. So a lot of unity and camaraderie between that starting five and Coach Alisi goes with them again. Yes, definitely. That's been the starting lineup for Coach Alisi for the majority of the season. And, you know, once you get to a point in the season, you got your rotation set and you run with the guys who've got you there. And those guys, George Smith Jr., Andre Harris, William Sixsmith, Jack Sixsmith, and Bryla Page has definitely been players who have been who have brought a lot of success with Coach Alisi this year. And on the other side of things, when you look at Hunter College, really being led by number four, uh, 12, excuse me, George Keener, averaging 18 points a game. Gio Gabidon averaging 11 a game. So those are the two guys I think that uh, Brew College are really going to have shut down, and Coach John Peelan is going to find ways to get them incorporating the offense in the early going. Yeah, definitely if the Brew Bearcats can slow down those top two players right there, Keener and Gabadon, they will definitely put themselves in a good position to win this game. But you also can't see when a player like Danny Fusco is coming in right behind them at 9.8 on the um, season. He's also a good player for them. He's going to be in that starting lineup. So the Hawks have a very small lineup that they're rolling out there today. So I wonder, and I look to see probably Andre Harris and George Smith Jr. utilize that size because they're only pushing out right now one player who's coming in at 6'6", six, six, the next player coming in at 6'3". So I wonder like to see if they use Andre Harris and George Smith Jr.'s size to their advantage. So we are moments away from tip here at the Arc Arena. It is your CUNYAC game of the week. It is also Battle of Lex, and you can see the crowd is in it. The fans are packed here at the Arc Arena. Definitely the biggest crowd that we've had this season here, Jamal. And it's supposed to be wearing white. We got a good amount of a, a large portion of a white out here. Right, right. And we are moments away. It's going to be Hunter College in their road purples gold trim. It's going to be Baruch in their home whites, dark blue letters, light blue trim. It'll be Andre Harris. And George Keener on the tip, and we are underway here at the Arc Arena for the second game of your doubleheader. Andre Harris comes away with the tip, and Baruch will set up their offense with Jack Sixsmith. Ball moves around the perimeter. Jack Sixsmith takes a pick from George Smith Jr. Now Bryler Page, open three. Nolan Brusso off a little slow to close down, and Bryler Page knocks down his first shot of the evening. Bryler Page doing what he normally have done for the Bearcats, putting up that three and making it make and uh pushing himself he's trying to keep those numbers climbing jamal as he's in the thousand point club but there's no stopping him with a, at least three games left in his career hey man he could pass a couple more people on that list you know nice block there from behind as gabby don't tries to go up with it instead uh balls fed inside to number four dowda barrett no good and andre harris comes away with that one jack sixman now into the front court Bryler page turns around gets that one Andre Harris into the lane. And it's going to be a travel on Andre Harris. He'll go back to Hunter College. And already a quick tempo and some nice defensive play from the Bearcats. We're seeing a great play right there by Andre Harris. And we talked about him utilizing his size. You've seen on that last play again, the block from behind, but then also being able to get that rebound baseline for the Bearcats. Barrett has it now, gives it up top to Gabidon. Ball swung around, Fusco to Keener. Keener back to Fusco. Jack Sixsmith on him, crossover move. Into the paint is Fusco, high arcing floater, no good. But he gets fouled on the shot, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Foul's going to be on number 20, 22, excuse me, George Smith Jr., and that's going to be his first. I see Jack Sixsmith picking up where he left off the past couple of games. Going, oh, excuse me.
And Fusco knocks down the first. Fusco a 92% free throw shooter on the season. So uh, very impressive by Danny Fusco as he knocks them both down. And Jack Sixsmith will walk it up for the Bearcats. Fusco defending him at the three-point line. Looking for options as Sixsmith finds George Smith Jr. Top of the key. Three ball right wing from Bryler Page. Off back rim, no good. And it'll be Brusehoff to come away with it. Good shot up by Bryler Page, but it just looked like from where we were that it was drifting to the right a little bit. Barrett takes a pick from Brusehoff. Outside three from Keener. Right wing, no good. Andre Harris soars and gets that rebound. And I would love to see Andre Harris maybe get into that post a little bit more because not, not enough size right now, I don't think, on the Hawks, in the Hawks lineup right now to cover all the size that Baruch has between Smith Jr. and Harris. It's definitely not a lot of size, you know, with the only player right now who is Bruce, Bruce Uhoff, Bruce Uhoff, who comes in at 6'6". So definitely you want to see the Bearcats take advantage of, the, of that the only big man they can down low. Barrett into the lane, and he gets fouled there. It's going to be, I think, on George Smith Jr. Nope, they're going to call it on William Sixsmith. That must have been a little further outside. They're going to call it a shooting foul, really, and I didn't really see Sixsmith in on the play. Yeah, I don't know where where, they, where he was. I mean, he was not in on that play right there, but the ref called the, called the foul. And Barrett knocks down the first. Barrett shooting... Only 65% from the line, so definitely one of the guys you want at the free throw line if you're Baruch. And he rattles home the second. All right. Jack Sixsmith walks it across the timeline. Double pick there from Harrison Smith Jr. Briarler Page in the corner. Drives baseline. Nope. Cross back over. Comes back out. Has Fusco on him. Jack Sixsmith actually left open. I thought he was going to pull for a second. Instead gives it to George Smith Jr. Nice bounce pass. Oh, Briarler Page can't finish. He finds him inside. He can't finish again. Andre Harris tips it back in. And that gets the crowd off their feet. It was a nice find, though, by George Smith Jr., Jamal. But uh, uncharacteristically so, Briarler Page could not finish. Nice play there by Fusco. Hanging in the air. Can't finish. Goes around and out. And now Jack Sixsmith are going to push the tempo. Looking for options. William Sixsmith, corner three. Bang! Knocks it down from the corner. William Sixsmith. William Sixsmith. Doesn't matter if he's having a bad shooting night from the last game. He's coming in every other game ready to shoot that three up. I think my inner Mike Breen just came out I heard on that it. one. I heard a big bang. One of the uh, one of the greats to do it here in New York I'm for sure. Saying. Three there by Brusehoff. No good. And it's going to be Jack Sixsmith again to push the tempo. He goes right into the lane, finds Bryler Page outside on the wing. Bryler Page hops up into the paint, almost loses it, bounce pass inside, George Smith Jr., Bruce Hoff on him, Andre Harris again on the tip, and there's no denying him because it's Gio Gabidon inside, giving up three inches to Andre Harris, and on top of that, this guy Andre Harris could sure get up there. So with three and a half gone here in the first, Coach Peelan wants to talk things over. You're watching Baruch Basketball. It's the Battle of Lex here at the Arc Arena. On YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. Municipal Credit Union is one of the oldest and largest credit unions in the country. CUNY students fac and faculty are all eligible to join MCU and experience the benefits and security of credit union membership. For more support, please visit the credit Municipal Credit Union's website, nymcu.org, and support the official credit union of CUNY Athletics. So the start that Baruch wanted is definitely happening right now, Jamal. 10-4 to, to open up the game, including big threes by both Bryler Page and William Sixsmith. And when they've been missing shots, it's been Andre Harris to clean things up. I mean, Andre Harris is definitely taking advantage of his uh, of the, no, the size, the limited size that the Hawks have out there. And he's skying up for rebounds and putbacks. And Brew quickly to run again. Bryler Page now out to Sixsmith. Oh, excuse me, George Smith. Now Andre Harris looking for options. Back inside to Smith. He gets blocked. I think it was Bruce Hoff. Last touch it last. Now... Up ahead to number five, who just checked into the game, Hayden Belkin, and able to finish. Bounce pass out now from Sixsmith to Bryler Page. The tempo is really rampant here at the Arc Arena. Bryler Page goes up for it, and he's fouled. And I think Coach Peelan wants an explanation, and he's not going to get one. And it's tough when you're a coach, I think, because a lot of times you want an explanation from a ref who may not be making the call, so right. there's not a lot he can really do. 
And at the same time, the game, the, the ref has to stay within the game and focus on the game at the moment. You know, maybe now and then he can step over to the coach and talk, but the coaches, I mean, the referee's main focus is the action in between the lines. And he's off on the second, so he extends the lead to 11 to 6. As Benjamin Boateng is in the game now for George Smith Jr. Fusco losing the ball, keeps it loose. And now it'll be Gabby Doan on the right wing. Looking for options. Fusco back up top, back to Gabby Doan. Quick back and forth action. Back up to Fusco now. Jack Sixsmith on him. Goes the other way. Bruce Hoff now has it. Gives it upside to Gabby Doan. Puts one dribble. Tries to pull up over. Andre Harrison knocks that down. Nice shot there by Gio Gabby Doan from downtown. Gabby Doan able to pull up from three and able to bring the team back within two points. Now Jack Sixman has a right wing, takes the pick from Boateng, looking for options. O option is Boateng. Boateng way too strong, probably should have used glass there right. on the floater. Now it'll be Keener into the left wing. Up top to Fusco, looking for options. And Fusco calling out the offense here. Has Bryler Page draped all over him. Now Bruce Hoff, right wing. Cross to Gabby Doan. Belkin in the corner. Ball gets tipped. Almost comes away from Belkin. Now it's back to Gabby Doan on the left wing. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Hunter have to get something up. Five seconds on the shot clock. Spin move by Gabby Doan. He turns it over. Andre Harris up to William Sixsmith. And he lays it in off glass. And for a second there, I thought he was going to maybe throw it off glass yeah. as Benjamin Boateng was trailing the play. And you, and Not you, what you do in a 13-9 game. No, and you seen right there Benjamin Boateng was trailing, and he looked like he wanted to bang it on him. Nice play there by Danny Fusco on the other end. It's a hard shot off glass to get the lead uh, back down to two. And a turnover there by Andre Harrison. I'm not sure what he saw there as Benjamin Boateng was cutting across the baseline. And just a little bit of miscommunication between two players right there. But for the Hawks right now, Danny Fusco, that, that play right there to drop all the way to the lane, throw up that layup and make it, that was a great play by him. Checking into the game for Hunters, number three, Melvin Collins, getting his first action of the evening. Keener now around to Collins, his first touch. Back to Keener up top. Collins straight away, open three. Rattles that one home off back rim. Knocks that one down as Melvin Collins, the junior guard from Fort Hamilton, Brooklyn. Jack Sixsmith has it, now gives it off to Bryler Page. Collins on him, takes the pick left from Boateng. Nope, instead goes right. Bryler Page, high floater, no good. That's rebounded there by Hunter, and they'll be able to push the tempo. In the game, Abraham Rosso getting his first minutes, number 11 for the Hunter College Hawks, coming down with that board. Fusco up top. Gives it off to Collins. Finds Keener cutting. Comes around a screen, able to lay it in. And Hunter now up by three as Joseph Zacchino comes to the score, is able to check back in. The Hunter Hawks have definitely ramped up the aggression on the offensive end here. Nice play there by Sixsmith, going right into the chest of Danny Fusco and finishes it at the rim. And a smart play there by Jack Sixsmith. Doing what you have to do right there, realizing you have the one-on-one, -on -one, drop straight to the rim, take the contact, put up the layup, and it's good. Keener now has it, gives it up top to Fusco. Looking for options. Keener gets it back from Rosso. Bounce pass inside. Rosso can't finish with the high arcing shot. Boateng comes away with the rebound for the Bearcats. Good play right there by Bala Pace to check him right there, hold his ground, and keep the defender and cause that Aaron shot. And what a move. That, see, that's what I was talking about. Set up Andre Harris in the post, and he's going to go to work. The three-foot shot is, is going to be his game all night if he sets up there. I mean, you called it right there. You know, he just took one dribble, back and play, back and play it down, turn around, rise up, and go straight to the rim. Nice steal there by Harris. He takes it away from Collins. Might have been a bad play against Fusco. Andre Harris gets in the layup. And Coach Peelan wants a, a travel, and I don't know if he has a point. It looked like he got tipped out of his hands. Right. And even though he got there in time, it could have went either way. It could have been a blocking, or, but it got called, no call. Nice steal there by Benjamin Boateng. Pryler Page back to Boateng. Boateng into the lane, looking for options. Has Pryler Page straight on. Finds Jack Sixsmith to Andre Harris. And he's able to lay it in. What ball movement by Farouk. And it's getting loud here in the York Arena as both sides of the gym are starting to fill up with 11.38. Farouk lead. 
21-16. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. Hospital for Special Surgery is where the world comes to get back in the game. The hospital is ranked number one in the nation for orthopedics by U.S. News and World Report. No wonder Hospital for Special Surgery is the official hospital of the CUNYAC. For more information, please visit www.hss.edu. And Jamal, I think it was a 10-2 run now for the Bearcats. It's definitely right now the Bearcats. They felt the pressure a little bit from the Hawks. And the Hawks are definitely pushing the ball on them. Definitely getting some buckets and we took the lead at one point. But it started off with a Jack Six Smith layup, then a couple of shots from Andre Harris. And they find themselves up by five. That's one thing about the Bearcats. They don't get down early. And once they start to get down, they chip away at that lead one little bit by little bit. And you see them right now back up by five. And excuse me, it's actually been an 8-0 run for the Bearcats. So Andre Harris, three straight baskets. He now has 10. And George and Jack Six with really starting everything off with that nice layup against Danny Fusco. I mean, that's how it all starts by being aggressive. You know, we get one bucket to fall, and then you just get back on the off the defensive end, get a good stop, get back on offense, do the same thing, rinse and repeat. So Barrett is coming to the game for the Hawks, and Zacchino has checked into the game for the Bearcats. So is Alan Villar. As Andre Harris comes to the bench for the first time, into the lane is Rosso, looking for options. He finds Belkin. Belkin, high floater, no good. Rebounded by Villar. And Baruch can push the tempo, and Hunter has to get back. Jack Sixsmith will slow things up and call out the offense. Right inside to Villar. Villar is going to go to work. Has the height mismatch, the size mismatch. Can't finish. Ball's loose, and it'll be Zacchino with it. That was a good take by Villar. And one play. Jack Sixsmith into the lane. And almost it's hard to say as a senior, we're seeing some maturity out of the guy. But his last few games, Jamal, you talked about it early on. He has been superb at the point guard position. Superb is not even an understatement. He's been phenomenal. Excellent. This guy right here has been balling out, finding his open plays, getting, getting assists. And on that one play with the spin, going to the layup, getting the and one, the go, he almost made everybody in this crowd jump out of their seats. You see the plays at the top, though? Everybody all in white. You see them up there on the right side of the court. I mean, right side stands. They're going crazy for their Bearcats. Everybody's going crazy. And a play like that will get, the, get everybody on their feet. I believe that's the baseball team. And Brian Flannery, one of, uh, one of our commentators here on the, on the Bru on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcat Broadcasting, is actually on the baseball team. So he's getting to enjoy his final Battle of Lexington in the stands, but uh, he's part of that contingent that's going to be making a lot of noise tonight as Barler Page comes away with it for the Bearcats. Right into the lane, very wild, and it's going to stay with Baruch underneath. But a very dangerous play there by Barler Page as the ball seemed to be getting away from him as he entered the, the key. Yeah, it was definitely a dangerous play, and then on that one, you know, be fortunate enough and went out of bounds. You still have the offensive possession. Just go back, do what you've been doing all game, moving and cutting, finding the open man. Zakino now has it up top, gives it off to Jack Reese, his first few minutes in the game. As Jack Sixsmith has come down and to the bench, and it really been all of Sixsmith for, I think, really starting this drive. I mean, obviously, Andre Harris had a few good possess uh, part, uh, possessions and scores, but Jack Sixsmith really dictating the tempo as William Sixsmith three right there was way off. It'll go back off of Hunter, so it'll stay with Baruch. Nine seconds remaining here on the shot clock, though, so Baruch have to get something up. Inside to Harris, actually up top to Harris, excuse me. Spin move in the lane, high pull-up jumper, no good. Rebounded there by number 11, Rosso for the Hunter, and they'll quickly push Keener into the front court. He's quickly double teamed. Hand off there from Bru Brusehoff, and it's gonna be a foul on number 33, Alan Villar. And that's going to send du Douda Barrett to the line to shoot two. Gio Gabby don't come into the scorer's table to check back into the game for Hunter. As Belkin comes to the bench. A young team we have here in Hunter College. Granted six juniors, but not a single senior. So definitely a team to look out for in the coming years 
as uh, similar to, I think, how our women's team is. Right. A lot of young players really just kind of understanding the game and learning the college game. No, especially when you have young players on there, all the LS statements, you just let them learn from them. Nice find there by Reese to Andre Harris. Extends the lead back to 11. Nice job by Keener. Gets it inside to Bruce Hoff. Nope, stolen there. Andre Harris comes away with that steal. Reese, dangerous pass, trying to find Villar underneath. Almost gets it to three hands of purple, and it'll stay with Baruch. If that's one thing you know about Jack Reese, he's going to get the ball up in a hurry, so you got to be ready for that pass. Zakino thinks about pulling it. Gives it off to William Sixsmith, another guy that could shoot as well. Andre Harris gets it even further inside. Nice find by Harris to Villar. It looked like Harris was going up for the shot there, Jamal, but instead gives it inside to Villar to finish. Great find by Andre Harris. You see Alan Villar with the size. Put up the shot, and it's good. Gabi Don gets closed out by Reese to no avail. And it'll be a two, so it's 28-19 Baruch lead. Now Alan Villar, nice cross-court pass. Zucchino for three, shot no good. Villar can't get that rebound. It goes into the hands of Barrett. Hunter's going to push into Keener. Nice little crossover hop step. Uh, more of a Euro step, I guess. And Villar comes away with that rebound. Reese, nice dribbling there. Gives it off to Zucchino, trying to find Harris inside. He gets double teamed back out to Zucchino. Back to Harris. Harris going to work on Rosso. Backing him down. Bruce Hoff with the help D. Finds open Villar, but he's fouled by Barrett, and will go to the line to shoot two. And right now, Andre Harris probably playing some of the best basketball that we've seen. Granted, 10 points, five boards. He only has that one assist, but you look at that play, that would have been his assist as well. Yeah, there was many there was many plays right there where you saw him looking for the extra pass, and he's just doing what he have to do. You know, he knows the defenders are going to try to come over and double team him. And on that last play, we've seen that. He's able to find Allen Villar for that shot. Or he's going to the line for two. And he's off on the first. You got to like the way Andre Harris is playing. He's playing both aggressive and also looking for his other teammates out there on the court. And he's doing it on both ends. Already two steals and a block on the defensive end. So Andre Harris quickly filling up the stat sheet. Definitely making his presence felt out there. He's off on the second. So he goes over two from the line. Keener with the rebound for Hunter. And the six foot three guard. We've seen the ball in his hands a lot when Fusco hasn't been on the court. St still there by Jack Sixsmith, who just checked back into the game. Jack Reese gonna push. Andre Harris straight up Gio on Gio Gabidon. Gives the handoff to Jack Reese. Corner three there by Zucchino, shot no good. Tipped out by Andre Harris, and a fresh 30 for Baruch with Sixsmith now to Reese. Gives it back up to Sixsmith, looking for options. Now Zucchino has it on the right wing. Looking for Jack Sixsmith, finds him inside the Villar. He's quickly double teamed, can't finish. Ball's batted around, it's Andre Harris who comes away with it. And it's blocked, and I think Andre Harris is looking around for a foul, and he may have a point there. He seems to be hounded underneath. Right, they're doing all that they can do right there to keep him on the, on the court, but able to go up and get the rebound. But I thought the foul even occurred on that earlier play with Alan Villar as he put up the shot, the early shot. And Zakino fouled in the corner as they had the double team in the trap. It's going to be the fourth team foul on Hunter. So definitely a lot of action here in the early going. Zakino now gets it on the right wing, thinks about the shot. Goes into the paint, nice scoop layup, can't finish. Rebound batted around, and it's going to be Barrett that comes away with it. Barrett quickly into the lane, and he gets fouled. It's going to be side out for Dauda Barrett. Barrett Lowe, the freshman, six foot five, forward, who checks back, checks into the game for the first time tonight for Hunter College, giving them a little bit more size. Yeah, he's definitely somebody that's going to come in for Bruce Hoff right now. But more importantly, that size that they're pushing out there for the Hawks has not caused the Brook Bearcats any trouble, especially for Andre Harris. Belkin has the ball for the Hawks. Gives it off to Barrett. Barrett's going to drive against George Smith. Nice finish there. Smart play there by George Smith, not the foul. Yeah, that was the right move right there. He, he, he you seen the, you seen the offensive player, you know, Barrett get the, get the position, take the contact, and just put up the shot. You just have to live with plays like that. 
Jack Reese now has it, gives it off to Zakina. Oh, he might have had an open shot as Barrett was slow to close out. Ball still being moved around. Now inside to Andre Harris, high floater, no good. And Baruch really starting to struggle on offense the last few possessions. Yeah, it is definitely not playing out the way. I mean, he's just not getting the shots to fall right now. They've been able to put up some quality shots, get some good passes, get the basket, get the ball where they needed to. Just can't get that, that ball to fall. Gabby Doan has it up top now with Jack Reese on him. Steal there, and Andre Harris is going to come away with it on the fast break. And he can't lay it in, but he gets his own rebound. And as he falls down, he knocks it down. And it's going to be a timeout for Coach Peelan with 6.21 remaining here in the first half. Baruch lead 30-21. to You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. In New York City, there is a place for people that want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Where if you work hard, the possibilities are endless. A place to learn, train, and play. In that order. The City University of New York Athletic Conference. This is where it all comes together. Find your people, be a part of a team, and don't just play the game, change the game. Champions aren't born, they're built. The City University of New York. Be exceptional. And welcome back to the Arc Arena here on the campus of Baruch College. It's the second game of the CUNYAC Game of the Week doubleheader. It is the Battle of Lexington between Hunter College and Baruch here at the Arc Arena. And it'll be Hunter's ball after Andre Harris leading all scores with 14 was able to finish on his back pretty much as he popped back up after. It'll be Glenn Vasquez into the game for the Hunter College Hawks and he'll have it on left wing, gives it up top to Rosso, hand off to Keener. Keener looking for options, Vasquez comes through, it's gonna be Costas Patsalas who loses the ball and William Sixsmith comes away with it. He's fouled, can't finish and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Hard foul right there by Keener. Hard foul right there by Keener. You know, stopping William Sixsmith from getting the shot right there. But William Sixsmith on the season. An 82% free throw shooter. So that's the person you want at the line as he makes the first. Baruch lead by 10, and you can hear the, the noise level getting ramped up as Baruch continue to take this lead here in the ball game. Up by 11 now, a little under six minutes remaining. Here in the first half, it'll be Patsalis. And now the Baruch Bearcats are putting on the full court pressure. Ooh, he might have had a back court, I think, and it's a steal anyway, so George Smith Jr. comes away with it. But it might have been a back court there, I think, on Belkin. As he received that pass at the halfway line, I'm not sure if he established position in the front court. Right, he had one foot over and one foot in the back court. Andre Harris can't finish. Ball's loose. It's going to be rebounded there by Hunter, and Keener will be able to walk things up. Costas Patsalis, number 15 on Hunter from Nicosia, Cyprus. He may be the only Cyprian we have in the CUNYAC conference. <laughs> Bradley Page inside. Andre Harris definitely has the hot hand, William, but he'll give it to a hot hand too. William Sixsmith around and out, no good. George Smith Jr. into Andre Harris. His shot no good there, and Keener comes away with the rebound, and he'll push for the Hawks, but Baruch definitely getting their chances on the offensive end. Keener shot a little short. Ooh, hard foul there, and you can hear the thud all the way from here. George Smith Jr. on the foul, but he lands hard on number 12, George Keener. He's a little slow to get up there. You know, he wants, just want to take his time as he gets up off that court. But it was a it was a tough foul right there. He's still on the floor right there. Let's see what happens. And Andre Harris now in front of the scores table taking a knee. He looks either winded or hurt. I'm, I'm not really sure 100%. He did take that hard fall before Jamal on that play. Right. And with Keener still down, I think it's going to be Boateng that checks into the game. Andre Harris having a few sips of water. But really up by 11, he might not even need him for the rest of the half. Definitely 
uh, if he's if he's hurt or if, especially if it's a head injury, you definitely don't want him back into the game. Right. You know, there's been many times when Andre Harris has gone out of the game, but we have we see, we see George Keener getting up off the court, talking to the refs. So that's always a good sign. But we always seen when Andre Harris goes out of the game, other Bearcats come in and step up. So it's definitely a great feeling. You know, and we all hope that everything is all right. But we have Benjamin Boltang checking in for Andre Harris here at the 4 minute and 53 second mark of this game. We have Keener stepping to the line for two. I think Keener, what the refs explained to Coach Peelan is I don't know if he has to come off now or if he has to come off after the free throws. But he's going to have to come off at some point because he, he definitely was hurt. And it's going to be a timeout for the Hunter College Hawks with the fourth 53 remaining here in the first half. Baruch leading 32-21. George Keener will be at the line when we get back. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. Hey, CUNY fans. Do you need sporting goods? Wardell has provided exceptional service for 125 years and offers a 10% discount to all CUNY students, faculty, and staff when you present your valid CUNY ID upon your purchase. You got to go to Moe's. Models. We would also like to thank Pepsi. Pepsi is the official soft drink of the CUNY Athletic Conference. Keener will get some fluids in him, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. As we're back underway here at the Arc Arena, it is the Battle of Lexington, and very commendable to the Baruch uh, fans. When Keener got off the floor after you know that hard fall, a lot of applause and even some standing uh, ovation from the Baruch faithful. I mean that you know we all here, we're all rooting. For the Bearcats to win, but we're also rooting for a good game and everybody to stay healthy, you know? So if we see somebody fall and they get up and they're able to walk off this court, we want to give them some love, you know? Absolutely. Shows the class of the Baruch Bearcats fans. And Keener knocks them both down. Very impressive. Benjamin Boateng in the game now for the Bearcats. Boateng and George Smith Jr. in the game. Not something we see very often from Coach Elisi. Jack Sixman gets it into the front court. Barrett on him. Hand off to Bryler Page. Gives it up to drop George Smith Jr. Looking for options. It's William Sixsmith. He thinks about pulling. Instead, he goes past Keener. Now to Benjamin Boateng up top. Also past Keener. Gives it outside. Ball quickly move around the offensive end. Jack Sixman. Nice move. Underhand scoop layup from, excuse me, William Sixsmith. And Keener hobbling down the court. You can see he's definitely hurting. With Sixsmith right now as a dual threat, he could either hit it from three or put the ball on the floor and get straight to the lane for the layup. He has nine points here in the first half as it's Keener right now, right wing. Gives it inside, looking for options. Rosso is the option. He'll pull up over Boateng, too short. Boateng skies for the rebound, able to corral that, and he'll actually run point guard now. Boateng into the free, at the free throw line, gives it off to Bryler Page. Wide open back door, and he's going to finish. Great play right there by Benjamin Boateng. Getting the defenders just to focus solely on him and find Bryler Page back door. Barrett now to Rosso, finds Keener cutting. Nice, fi can't finish with the right hand. I was almost <laughs> certain he was going to hit that. I almost said nice finish. He didn't finish. Boateng up top looking for options. Sporting a headband tonight? That, that new Jamal? I mean, he's won a couple of times. A few games here and there. Gotcha. Dangerous pass by George Sick, uh, Smith Jr. as Danny Fusco can steal that one. Alley-oop to George Keener. Something I don't know if we've seen all year, an alley-oop in-game. Very nice play, nice lob there by Fusco, nice finish there by Keener. And you can tell when a coach knows that they're capable of doing it when they don't get mad when it's done. Right, you know, because at that point, that could have went either way, you know, because if they would have missed that one, if I'm a coach, I'm not pleased with my players doing that. The lucky thing, they made it. Pick there from Boateng, Page uses it. And it's going to be a foul. Foul's going to be on number four, Dowda Barrett. That's his second. So Page has an opportunity to extend the lead. Knocks down the first. As Gio Gabidon checks into the game, Barrett will come to the bench with two fouls here in the first half. Alan Villar into the game for the Bearcats as George Smith Jr. will come to the bench. Yeah. 
Bruce Hoff at the scorer's table for the Hunter College as Villar off on the second. Excuse me, as Bryler off on the second. My apologies. Three ball there by Fusco. Around and out. Boateng on the rebound. Jack Sixsmith will bring it up into the front court. Bounce pass to Boateng. He goes right into the lane. He loses. It's going to be an offensive foul. And it's going to go back to Hunter. Nice play there by Fusco to take it in the chest as Boateng comes barreling down the lane. That'll be Fusco to walk it across the timeline. A little bit, little bit under two minutes, two and a half minutes, excuse me, remaining here in the first. Bruce Hoff has it up top. Looking for options, hands it off to Belkin. Keener now. And it's going to be an offensive foul. The foul's going to be on Bruce Hoff. <laughs> it's, always, it's always fun hearing some of the miscommunication between coaches and refs. Hey, man, you know, sometimes we're previewed to some interesting commentary. <laughs> That's when you know the refs are being used to being yelled at when they respond when they're not even being talking to just because they assume <laughs> they're being yelled at. As Fusco comes away with the steal there, as instead it'll be Brother Page, steals it right back. Brother Page, free throw line jumper, no good off right rim. Keener comes away with the rebound. Under, a little under two minutes remaining here in the half. Keener right into the lane, a Euro step. Too strong. Andre Harris rips it away. Jack Sixsmith hard into the lane. High floater, no good. Villar comes away with that. He's blocked from behind. I think the block there is going to be at number five, Hayden Belkin. Nice play there by Belkin. Giving up some size at only six foot one to the six foot seven Alan Villar. Now it's Sixsmith in the corner, and it's going to be, a, uh, he's going to step out of bounds, and it's going to go back to Hunter and Coach Alisi a little bit upset with his own team. It's going to be a 30 second timeout and Coach is, uh, I can't tell really who's getting upset with but it looks like the whole team is huddled around him now. So Baruch Lee 37-25. It is the Battle of Lexington and the second game of your CUNYAC doubleheader game of the week. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. Register for the Army ROTC to be a leader and an officer in the U.S. Army, Army Reserve, or Army National Guard. You could also be eligible for a full tuition scholarship. Lead the team that makes a difference. Contact CUNY ROTC, ROTC today at 212-650-6478. Again, that's 212-650-6478. Paid for by the United States Army. So it'll be Fusco to walk things up for Hunter College. A minute and 35 remaining here in the half. If you're the Bearcats right now, you want a couple of good defensive defensive stops just so you can walk into halftime with a lot of momentum. Gabidon has it now. Almost losing it. He might have. Nope. Instead, Brusahoff, he gets it to Brusahoff. I thought he almost lost it there as Harris was draped all over him. Now it's Keener up top. Crossover move by Belkin. High floater. No good, but he's fouled. The foul's going to be on number three. William Sixsmith, and that'll send Belkin to the line to shoot two. Yeah, on that play right there, you gotta enjoy. You gotta really appreciate the Bearcats' defense because at multiple points they're rotating, they're staying in front of their defender, and all that play was a tough shot, a tough foul if you're William Sixsmith right there because you had it down to I think six on the shot clock, right? And that shot clock and that shot obviously didn't go. I mean, regardless of the contact, it was just a tough shot. You were talking about a running floater that you're gonna have to hit off glass, right? And it's just not a makeable shot for a lot of players, regardless of your level of basketball. Yeah. So to, And then, you know, if you assume the ball comes off on rebound with only four seconds left on the shot clock for them to then make something happen, um, I think it would just be a tough play. So a tough time to get that foul. Andre Harris, pull-up jumper, no good. Alan Villar comes away with it. Oh, he might have should've, probably should have went straight back up with it. Bryler Page to Andre Harris underneath. He's able to finish. At 16 for Harris on 8 of 16 from the field. And when you're playing as well as he's playing right now, you might as well just give him the green light all night. Jack Sixsmith on the steal. He's going to go coast to coast, and he's going to lay it in. Jack Sixsmith having a mock the game as well. That gives him seven on three of five from the field. Three assists, three steals for Sixsmith. So quality game for a few players with Jack Sixsmith's name just jumping off the stat sheet. No, definitely for Jack Sixsmith. You know, he's not a lot of play out there. He's going to go out and be flashy. He's not going to get a lot of highlights, but every play that he makes is always effective to his team winning. 
Half a second difference between the shot clock and game clock. And Hunter turn it over. That gets thrown into the scorer's table. Or maybe into the bench. Either way, it's going to go back to Baruch. 7.1 remaining. And a perfect time to bring William Sixsmith back into the game. Jack Sixsmith right into the lane. Gives it outside. Joseph Zacchino, corner three. Off back rim, no good. Ball's batted around. It's going to be Bruselhoff who comes away with the rebound for Hunter, and that will do it for the first half of basketball here at the Arc Arena between Hunter and John and Baruch. Excuse me. Baruch 41, Hunter 27, but what a first half. A lot of players for Baruch really firing all cylinders. The one that I think everyone will immediately notice on the stat sheet, Andre Harris, 16 first half points. Nine boards, three steals, and a block. He's almost has a double-double only in first half of basketball. Yes, Andre Harris has definitely come out with a lot of energy for the Bearcats. Talking about 16 points and 16 minutes of play. 50% from, from the field. But most importantly, there's some other players who have some bright spots as well. Most of them, I mean, majority of them are all starters. William Sixsmith, nine, nine points. One, shooting, has one three-point and shooting over 60% from the field. You know, Jack Sixsmith, like we talked a minute ago, seven points, but big. Three assists and three steals. And then rounding out the scoring, Ryler Page, seven points, two rebounds. Alan Villar following him with two points and four rebounds. But this game has been a lot of back and forth play between the Hawks and the Bearcats. But you see the Bearcats at a lot of different points dominating, whether it be on the boards, being more aggressive than the Hawks. And that's why they enjoy this lead right now. And if you're Baruch, really doing it on the glass. Out-rebounding them by 12. More importantly, out-rebounding them by 14 just on the offensive glass. When you have that type of possession, you're going to dominate. Baruch right now have 22. Hunter College have 22 field goal attempts in this game. Baruch have 22 more field goal attempts at 44 for the game. So when you look at stuff like that, if you're, if you're Hunter, you got to figure out a way how to uh, contend on the glass. Because right now you are currently struggling in an aspect that's going to bite you over and over again if you continue to let it happen. Also, taking care of the ball on the defensive end, getting the rebounds. But when you get the ball, take care of the ball. They currently have 13 turnovers on the evening. And so far, the Brick Root Bearcats have been able to take advantage of that. They have 14 points off of those turnovers. So the Bearcats, they're doing it on all, they're doing it on both sides. They're doing it on the defensive end. On the offensive end, we're talking about 15 rebound, 15 offensive rebounds in the first half alone. And 11 steals, which is very impressive. You're talking about doing it on defensive end, you're doing it both ends. And to your point, you create all those second chance opportunities. Right now, Baruch has not let up any second chance points. They currently have 14. But it's, it's, it's also the, another thing to note that the Bearcats, after suffering a loss this season, they've been able to bounce back and bounce back big. You know, they, they had to step up that loss against Brooklyn College last week. But every time they suffered a loss, they've been able to string, a, string together a couple of solid wins. You know, early in this season, they, they enjoyed a 6-0 and streak right before they lost to College of Staten Island. But right after that, 4-0, and then they lost to Brooklyn College. So there's a trend we see with the Bearcats. So far in this season, they have not lost back-to-back -back games. And this is definitely the time to get on that hot streak. We mentioned that it has changed in how playoffs are going to be. The, the semifinals are no longer at City College. We just found out. The semifinals are going to be at the home team's court. So if you stay undefeated at home where you're currently, you haven't lost a game at all at 10-0, then you have to continue to do so. You're going to be playing home against College of Staten Island, which is going to be the toughest game of your season remaining, obviously, but also probably one of the toughest games all season, Staten Island currently 11-3 and three in the conference, only a half game back from Baruch. So that will pretty much decide your first and second seed. Right. You win against tonight against Hunter. You go at Lehman, who Lehman's only 5-8 and eight in the conference, 7-14 and 14 overall. And you really have an opportunity to come back at home and maybe even have it sealed up before then. Right. If not, you have to come home, beat College Staten Island, where you feel comfortable playing them. And then on top of that, you get the bye regardless for the top two seed. And you have that semifinal game at home, which is huge for Baruch for how well they've been playing at home. It's definitely huge for Baruch. And it's also huge that they have the advantage of 
two of their last three games being at home on this court, like you mentioned a minute ago. They're undefeated. And when they come on the, and come into the Arc Arena, it's very hard to beat them. As you can see right now, they're giving the Hawks all of the trouble that they could give them right now, and they're up by 14. So we'll be back in about six minutes with the preview of your second half action. It is the second game of your CUNYAC doubleheader game of the week between Hunter College and Baruch, which of course it means it is the Battle of Lexington here at the Arc Arena. Baruch lead 41-27 and a half. You're watching Baruch basketball on, on the home of all Baruch Athletics YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. In New York City, there is a place for people that want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Where if you work hard, the possibilities are endless. A place to learn, train, and play. In that order. The City University of New York Athletic Conference. This is where it all comes together. Find your people, be a part of a team, and don't just play the game, change the game. Champions aren't born, they're built. The City University of New York. Be exceptional. In New York City, there is a place for people that want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Where if you work hard, the possibilities are endless. A place to learn, train, and play. In that order. The City University of New York Athletic Conference. This is where it all comes together. Find your people, be a part of a team, and don't just play the game change the game champions aren't born they're built the city university of new york be exceptional
in New York City, there is a place for people that want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Where if you work hard, the possibilities are endless. A place to learn, train, and play. In that order. The City University of New York Athletic Conference. This is where it all comes together. Find your people, be a part of a team, and don't just play the game, change the game. And welcome back to the Arc Arena here on the campus of Baruch College. It's the Battle of Lexington between the Hunter College Hawks and your Baruch Bearcats. We are moments away from the start of the second half, the final half of our Baruch doubleheader. It is the CUNYAC Game of the Week. We would like to thank Pepsi for the CUNYAC Game of the Week. Pepsi, the official soft drink of the CUNY Athletic Conference. We are moments away from the start of our second half. Baruch lead 41-27. If you're just joining us, the Lady Bearcats lost, unfortunately, against the Hunter College Hawks, 74-43, which started out as a close game and kind of got away from them in the second half. But we're back in just a moment. Hunter College wearing their purple jerseys. They'll start with the ball. It's going to be Bruce uh, excuse me, Bruce Hoff, yes, Ruko, Rusko, excuse me, Fusco, I'm so sorry, Barrett, Gabby Doan, and Keener for Baruch. It'll be Smith Jr., William, and Jack Sixsmith, Bryler Page, and Andre Harris. Shot was no good, but it'll go back to Hunter. I think it was last off William Sixsmith underneath. It'll be Barrett to inbound. Getting lost on my own words in the early going here of the second half, Jamal. Got, uh, Keener now has it up top, right wing. Ryler Page, and as Page comes by, he's wearing some sneakers. I don't know if they're light up or just like fluorescent on top. It's the logo. I think those are the um, PG 2.5s. It's a um, collaboration they did with PlayStation, Paul George and PlayStation. I think that, 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 Andre that, Harris had like the blue ones you were yeah. saying, right? So what, the logo is just like fluorescent or something? I don't know. Every time It catches my eye every time he runs by. As Bryler Page loses the ball there, might have caught his eye a little bit as Barrett comes away with it and he'll go coast to coast. Trying to find an open pass. I think it was to Gubbidone and it'll stay with Hunter College. You sure they're not light up, Jamal? I feel like... No, I think they're light up, but that logo is the PlayStation logo that you see right there. But it's lit up, right? Yeah. Oh, that is wild. Um, nice finish there by Keener inside. I remember when, like, Jordans were the hottest thing, you know? Every year right. they came out with a different number Jordan. Obviously, 1 to 23, and now, like, the superstars in today's game are in the 30s. But, like, to see some of these shoes and some of the collaborations, it's... It's quite a sight, honestly, as Andre Harris' floater's good, and he's wearing a new pair of kicks tonight as well, too. No, you definitely hit, hit it on the head. There's new kicks that that young guys are wearing, but at, at the same time, the Jordan still reigns supreme. I don't have that type of shoe money. That's my problem. Hey, man, you know? I, I mean, I, I, I totally understand. <laughs> We're talking about two, $300, and for the size I wear, come on. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, these size 12s, I got a wide foot, you know, so. Come on, man. <laughs> Inbound there to Brusehoff. Gives it off to Gabby Doan who loses the ball as he hits the deck. Bryler Page comes away with it. Gives it off to Andre Harris. It was Six Smith. Andre Harris looking for options inside to George Smith Jr. Trying to bounce it back to Andre Harris. Able to do so. Andre Harris wide open laying. Baruch lead by 16. Coming in on two minutes gone here in the second. Great move right there for Andre Harris. Picking up where he left off in the first half. Nice steal there by Harris. Harris trying to go coast to coast as Gabby Doan. And Barrett on him, and he couldn't finish. But Jack Sixsmith able to follow up with the rebound as Hunter couldn't get back in time. Bryler Page has it now. Baruch had a fresh 30. And that's a little bit what you were talking about earlier. When you have people really close to you, you know, most of the time you're thinking about the land as opposed to finishing. And Sixsmith gets fouled. It's going to be a foul on the floor. The foul's going to be number four. Dowda Barrett, his third.
Inbound to Andre Harris. He gives it off six Smith, right wing three. Around and out, no good. Gabby Doan on the rebound. Keener now to push. Belkin Wayne the check in for the Hawks. Keener, offensive foul. It's going to be on George Keener. That's going to be his third, second, excuse me. Nice play there. But I believe Bryler Page able to take one in the chest. Good move right there for Bryler Page to stand his ground, take the offensive charge, and get another possession for the Bearcats here on the offensive end. Jack Sixsmith brings it to the front court, gives up to George Smith Jr., back to Sixsmith, and they can now set up Coach Alisi's offense. Now back out, elbow jumper from Andre Harris. He's picking up right where he left off. Jamal just playing a solid game here. Overall, now up to 22 points, six already in this half. Belkin looking for options. Bruce Hoff inside, back to Belkin on the baseline. And it's going to go off, I think, either Smith or Six Smith's leg less, and it'll stay with Hunter College. Hard to see in there. Stuff kind of got congested. Right. But it'll be Hunter's ball side out on the far side. Nine seconds remaining here on the shot clock. Hunter going to have to work quickly once they get it in. Definitely can see right now Hunter is definitely trying to move the ball around and find a good offensive possession here. They're only down by 18, so they're still in this game. Keener now, a nice play there. Wild play, but Belkin able to find Keener. And I think that has to be the next evolution of our broadcast from all the access to instant replay. Right, right. That'll be some great stuff that we can actually show, you know, and run back some plays. You know, there's a lot of action that happens during the game. And to see the replay, it always feels good, you know. And Andre Harris letting the crowd know he's too strong. Two offensive boards for him, and he's able to finish his own miss. He now has 24 and 10. Fusco has it up top now. Jack Sixsmith on him. Keener left wing. Brusehoff wants it inside. Gabby Doan cuts at the free throw line. He pump fakes. Gets Andre Harris out of position. Gabby Doan goes up. Gets his own rebound though. Can't finish. Can't finish on the second. Gets another rebound. Can't finish again. It's going to be Belkin. Nope. It's going to be a foul. There was just a battle back and forth between everybody down low in the paint. All we see was just hands flying and the balls just kept going up in the air. I think Coach Peelan wanted a foul on Gabby Don't shot. Instead, it will go. It'll stay with Hunter underneath, but it looked like Gabby Don't kept going up. He might have got a lot of contact, but good D there by Baruch to hold their ground and not foul. Fusco to inbound. Gets it inside to Brusehoff, and he'll get fouled as his shot's no good. Gabby Doan doing some yapping at the ref. Coach Peeling has to be careful to make sure there's no uh, technicals thrown around as he'll, they'll listen for only so long. You know, and then when they tell you settle it down, you better take the coach's war you better take the referee's warning, excuse me. Excuse me, that's actually number 25, Barrett Low at the line. My apologies on that cross up. And he goes one of two from the line. Andre Harris with his 11th board. He seems ultra determined tonight, does Harris, to get this win here on the Battle of Lex. You know, definitely after coming off a tough loss at Brooklyn, I don't blame him. You know, you want to definitely come back and defend your home court and get some get a good game going, you know. The Brook Bearcats definitely know how to turn over, turn around a game after um, a loss as they haven't had back-to-back -back losses all season. Nice block there by Keener on Bryler Page. And it'll be Hunter's ball now with Fusco in the front court. Gabidon has it. Foul's going to be at number 15, Andre Harris, as he kind of got a little bit too close to Gabby Doan. I think Gabby Doan's a little worried that he might have got called for that elbow up high. And you know, sometimes Andre Harris finds himself in a little bit of foul trouble early on in this game. That was his first foul. So he definitely is going to see more of him out there on that court. Which has allowed him to play 21 minutes so far of the 25 total played. Fusco has it up top, looking for options. Inside to low. Low back out to Gabby Doan, right wing three. Shot off back rim, no good. Ball still loose, Low comes away with it, gives it off to Gabby Doan. 
He goes right around Villar, can't finish. Coach Peelan wants another call there. Now it's Sixsmith, almost ran over the ref right there. That was interesting. Now Jack Sixsmith, right wing three. I think the crowd wants to see that drop just because of uh, how well Jack's been playing tonight. He's definitely been one of the bright spots for the Bearcats out there, doing it all on the defensive end and the offensive end. According to our infographs, he's been the second most efficient player that Baruch has had tonight. Behind, of course, Andre Harris, who's been by far the most effective player that Baruch has had tonight, averaging over a point and 1.1 points per minute he's on the floor. And the foul there is going to be on the floor. It's going to be on number one, Jack Sixsmith, just as we mentioned his name. It'll be Fusco to inbound underneath. Baruch lead by 17, a little bit more than five minutes gone here in the game. I mean, in the second half. Inbound now there to Keener, and able to finish off Glass. And the Hunter bench really trying to get their team rallied up here as they try to chip away at this Baruch lead. Alan Villar has it up top, looking for options. Hands off to Sixsmith. No, ball's loose. No, Gabby Doan almost came away with it. And Sixsmith gets fouled as he goes up with the layup. That'll send Sixsmith to the line and foul number five, Hayden Belkin. The sophomore guard from Glendale, New York. That'll be his first. And William Sixsmith around and out. No good on the first free throw. He's using money from there. He's shooting 82% on the season. And he knocks down the second. Gabby Don has it up top now. Ball swung around the perimeter. It's... Keener left wing, and it's going to be a foul off the ball. Foul's going to be number 15. Andre Harris on a push. And Jack Reese will be quick to check into the game. Jack Reese checking into the game. Sixsmith comes to the bench. And it's Belkin up top. Crossover move on him. It'll be Fusco replacing him up top. Now to Belkin on the right wing. Inside to Keener, had position on Page, had to corral that pass though. Now Fusco has it up top with Reese covering him. Fusco high arcing three shot, no good. It's going to be Villar on the rebound as he gets up high, gives it off to Reese, and now Reese can push it up the court with some of his speed. Great rebound by Villar there. Amongst two defenders, able to wrap up that ball and get another offensive possession for the Bearcats. And Andre Harris is fouled here, the ball up top. The foul is going to be at number zero, Danny Fusco. That's his third. Ball inbounded to Jack Reese into the backcourt. 17 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Jack Reese calling out Coach Alisi's play. Looking for options is Andre Harris up top. Now inside to Villar, working one-on-one. -on -one. Nice spin move by Villar. Almost a half spin out and a back in for the easy right hand layup. I think he was looking for contact. Right, just a quick move right there to fake out the defender and go right around and go up for the layup. Fusco has it now. He'll drive into the paint. Ball goes, I don't even know how that was a foul. It looked like it went off Jack Reese's face. It looked like both of them were fighting for the ball in that moment, so it was just kind of up in the air. And out of all that, the foul's actually going to be at number 15. Harris again, that's his third, and just when we said he only had one foul, quick to get two more, and that may have him come to the bench. It does as Benjamin Boateng checks into the game. But I think this is a good time to do that, have him sit down. You're going to need him down the stretch, and Benjamin Boateng is definitely a player who you can put inside there and is definitely going to be productive for the Bearcats and get some quality minutes. Agree. I just want to see where the scoring is going to come from with Harris on the bench. Granted, uh, William Sixsmith on the floor with 10 points. Briar LePage has seven, but hasn't scored since the first half. Now it's definitely, definitely going to be. We're going to definitely see where the scoring is going to come from for the Bearcats. But with this, with this bunch of group out here, as long as they're able to make the right pass and get a good looks, I think they'll be able to get some buckets here. Step back from Boateng around and out, no good. Ball's batted around. It's Fusco who comes away with it for Hunter, trailing by 18. A little bit more than seven minutes gone here in the second half. Fusco going to go straight to the rim. High off the glass. Way off, though. 
as Boateng comes all the way with the rebound. It'll be Jack Reese back into the front court. He's going to quickly go end to end. Lays it off the glass. No good, but he's fouled. And I like the element that Reese brings to the floor. I mean, he definitely has a pace. And granted, Jack Sixman is having a great game, but definitely has a little bit more pace than Sixsmith does and, able, and gives a little bit more dimension to Coach Elise's Bearcats. I think it's a good way to spell the two because, you know, you have Jack Sixsmith who's going to always push the tempo. Then you have Jack Reese who always comes in and put, takes it to another level. And it's that speed that he has that puts the pressure on the defense. Like you see him going straight to the rim on that one. The defender had no other choice but try to defend and was able, he was able to draw the foul, go to the line for two shots. I think Jack Reese is a great element off the bench because he changes the whole tempo for the Bearcats. Once he gets the ball, they get out and run. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. It's definitely like even when he got the ball in the backcourt here, a quick two pass and he's just quickly right in there. Nice play by Villar trying to get the rebound. And he does get the rebound on the missed free throw there by Reese. The foul is going to be number 11, Abraham Rosso, who just checked into the game. Also back in the game is Dota Barrett. And now Reese will un inbound underneath his own basket. Up top to Boateng. Gets Villar inside. I think should go to the outside shoulder. He does. No, it's going to say a travel. He had a wide open lane there on the outside. Nice spin move over his right shoulder. He just took too many steps. I think it was the in move, then the out move. He probably should have just went straight with the out move. Right. Once you make that one, once you make the one move, you just got to go. Gotta and, go. you know, we say it from here. We see him with his back to the basket. He's facing us, obviously, at the scorer's table. We see the move that he should make. Right. It's just so much harder in the moment. You look left. You're like, oh, he's there. Then by the time you look right, you see you have that lane. You just shuffle your feet a little too much. Rosso loses the ball, and now it'll be William Sixsmith quickly pushing the tempo. He's going to go end to end. He gets, no, he gets a little contact. No call, though. Boateng off on the shot. Bryler Page gives it off to Sixsmith. I don't know what happened there. He looked like he was trying to tip pass it to somebody. I thought he was going to pull up for three. Yeah, on that one, I think if he would have got the pass, the pass clean, he definitely would have pulled up. I think it was a little bit of miscommunication between Page was, and Sixsmith. It was weird, though. It almost looked like William was trying to maybe dish it to somebody with a quick tap pass because he almost put his, like, palms out to push the ball. Right, and you see him by the page coming across there, so just probably a little tangle up between the two. And it'll be Jack Reese on the off-ball foul. It's going to be his first. Zakino will check back into the game as Sixsmith comes to the bench. But now we have an interesting situation as the Brew Bearcats are in the penalty at the moment. They're, they're in the penalty at the moment, so it was one and one. And Belkin off on that one. Boateng comes away with the rebound, and Jack Reese is going to call out Coach Elise's offense as he comes right in front of the Baruch bench, trying to find Villar inside. Rosso on him. Villar working on Rosso. Way too far inside. What positioning there by Villar. He's able to finish off the glass. In that, move, in that moment, just use your size, back down the player, use your size for the positioning, and go right up for the layup. Villar's got six points, six boards, and a fruitful night from the, the center out of the Bronx, New York. Keener now into the paint, kicks it back out to Barrett. Barrett drives. Offensive foul, nice play there by Villar, and not something that we're accustomed to seeing as he runs back down the court. I think that's his second charge drawn of the afternoon. The back, evening. Back to back plays, doing it on the offensive end and then next on the defensive end. Alan Villar, two good plays to keep this, bell, keep this ball game going for the Bearcats. And now they find themselves about 21. So it's definitely a great play on both ends of the court for Alan Villar. So it's going to be a timeout here on the floor with 11 02 remaining. Baruch lead now by 21. And you might see some of the Baruch bench here coming out soon. Um, and the crowd is going to get loud here in the final half of the second half. You're watching Baruch basketball. You're watching the Cuniac game, doubleheader game of the week. And you're also watching the Battle of Lexington, all on the home of Baruch Athletics YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. Hospital for Special Surgery is the where the world comes to get back in the game. The hospital is ranked number one in the nation for orthopedics by U.S. News and World Report. No wonder Hospital for Special Surgery is the official hospital of the CUNYAC. For more information, please visit www.hss.edu.
in the nick of time, but she is correct. Congratulations. And Boateng will bring it up. It'll be Zakino on the right wing. Boateng up top. Briler Page now left wing. Nice crossover move. Bruce Hoff struggling to stay with him. Bruce Hoff trying to pump himself up on the defensive end. Now it's Reese. Shot way short. It'll be Keener. Now in the corner three there by Rosso. No good. It's going to go off Boateng last. And it'll stay. Excuse me. It was actually Fusco. And it'll stay with Baruch. Ball trying to get inbounded again. Once again, tipped away by Baruch. Nice defensive play by the Bearcats. Inbounded now Keener, right wing three. Shots no good. Boateng comes away with it. And it'll be Reese to push the offense. Coming to the halfway point of the half. Bounce pass inside to Villar. Villar working. On Barrett low, and the foul's there is going to be on number 25. Low. And that'll send Villar to the line to shoot two. And he's off on the first. Checking into the game is number three, Melvin Collins, as Dota Barrett comes to the bench. Re ready to check into the game is also number 10, DeAndre Gibbs for the Bearcats. And he will now, as Bryler Page comes to the bench, wonder after how much more we'll see of him tonight, Jamal. I think the way the Bearcats are playing, that may be all that we saw from Bryler Page this evening. Because right now, the Bearcats have played a, a complete game. But with 10 minutes remaining in this game, it can go any which way, you know? And Keener's fouled there as Villar takes a nice shot at him there. And he'll send Keener to the deck. It's the second foul on number 33, Alan Villar. Keener knocks down the first. Keener, a solid free throw shooter of his own right. Not too bad at 77% on the season. These are going to be. And also see him in the game after that, that, that spill he took earlier. That was a tough fall. So it was great to see him back in the game. Reese will walk it up. Bounce pass on the wing to DeAndre Gibbs. Gives it up top to Boateng. Ball outside to Reese. Villar trying to battle for position. The foul is going to be at number 25. Barrett low underneath. Excuse me, number 23, Nolan Brusehoff. And Villar knocks down the first of the one and one. Extends the lead to 22. Yeah, definitely the Brook Bearcats are balling. And, you know, it, it all started with Andre Harris being so aggressive from the field, you know, shooting over 50% 50, 50 with 24 points. Off on the second was Villar. Now Keener goes right past Gibbs, right into the lane, and it's going to be a blocking foul. The foul is going to be on number... 33, Alan Villar trying to get another charge call for him this evening. Why not go for the trifecta, you know? I don't blame him. Keener going straight to the basket, though, playing a little hero ball here in the late going. I understand you're down by 22. I can't really see this the best route to make a comeback. Right, you know, but desperate times come with desperate measures, and he just look at it like, I got to put my head down and go. 
Asaph Charles checks into the game for the first time tonight. And it gets it back to 20. Does Keener, so two of two from the line. Costas Patsalas checks back into the game, the freshman guard from Cyprus. Inbound to Reese, gets it up ahead to DeAndre Gibbs. Charles gets blocked. Nope, is it gonna say it's out of bounds off Charles last and it'll go back to Baruch. I think if you get the ball there to ASAP Charles a little bit quicker, he's, he's wide open either for the layup or dunk. Right, I may even want to see you just throw it up there. Maybe he could go ahead and catch the alley hoop and bang it on him. Let Hunter know they're not the only ones that could throw alley hoops in this just, gym. I'm just saying, man, this, <laughs> this is the home court. This is, you know, the battle of Lex. A nice move there by Lowe. Can't finish with that right hand, though. A little too strong. Now Zacchino has it up ahead of the pack, and Jack Reese will slow things down. Nope, right back to Zacchino. Three ball, no good. Charles on the rebound. He's able to lay it in. And this is a guy I'm very intrigued about, Asaph Charles. Listed at six foot nine, junior, and I want to see him get some more minutes because next year I think he's going to have a lot bigger of a role on this Bearcat team. Oh, he's definitely going to be somebody that they're going to have. They're going to be relying on playing at six, coming at six nine. And it's not many days you get players that are six nine coming to your team. And Collins gets trucked right there by Jack Reese. I think they were just both going for the rebound, but I've never seen Reese really belt, uh, barrel over a guy the way he just did with Collins. Right, you know, sometimes when you got, you got your motor running high and, you know, you're just trying to attack that basketball, sometimes bad plays like that happen, you know. In, unintentional, but it's just a part of the game, you know. Absolutely. Collins off on the first, checking into the game from Hunters, number 10, Joe Heavey. Also, Nate Orman will check in for Benjamin Boateng. Seeing more of a younger lineup out there. It's Gibbs, Reese, Orman, Charles, and Zacchino. See if they could play this out and hopefully not let Hunter back into the game where they could play out maybe the last eight and a half minutes. Jack Reese brings it across the timeline. 20 seconds remain on the shot clock. Eight and a half on the game clock. Nice pass there by Orman. The ball movement's going quick around the perimeter here for Baruch. And the foul's going to be on number 15, Patsalis. That's going to be his first foul, and that's going to send Takino to the line to shoot two. Glenn Vasquez waiting to check in. And at this point, both teams are in the, the double penalty, so every foul at this point will be two shots at the line. Definitely still down the tempo of the game here. You know, if you're, in, if you're the Hawks right now, you may want to slow this down as much as you can so you can chip back away and get back into this game. But, but the Baruch Bearcats are not letting up. And if Baruch can just hit their free throws, they'll get out of here with the W tonight because um, a lot would have to go against them to to blow this one right. down the stretch. And Zacchino goes two of two from the line, checking into the game number 14. Michael Richards as Jack Reese comes to the bench. It's impressive. You would have thought Reese might have been part of this platoon to end the game. Right. Um, maybe shows the high esteem that Coach Alisi holds him in to bring him off here with eight and a half, eight minutes remaining now. And, you know, de definitely when the game is at this point, you have good players that's on the bench who can still be productive, so you may want to see a little bit more of them. Give them an opportunity. Especially Richards is a sophomore. I assume Otley will get some time. I assume you'll probably see Bantis and Voss Potts also get some minutes here for the Bearcats. Ooh, looks like the ball's coming right at us there. Hey, from we, had, we had a situation early in the season where two of them came at us one time. And you were definitely alert for both of those. I don't know, man. <laughs> one could have totally destroyed my laptop. Yeah, that's, a, that's a computer down, but that's not cool. <laughs> Foul's going to be number 10, Heavey, and that's going to send Zacchino to the line to shoot two. And it's a weird mood because how, how you know, raucous the crowd was, it's kind of leveling out now as we kind of get mm -hmm. to the latter part of this game 
when it's starting to get away from the Hunter College Hawks here. Yeah, but as it should, you know. The fans see where, where the Brew Brick Hats currently stand right now. They're up by 22 after Zacchino made that last free throw. And right now, it's just about the Bearcats just executing, taking care of the basketball, running out the clock. And walking out here victorious, you know. You could definitely see that the Bearcats benefited from having this crowd in here as they felt the energy and they came out the gates running quick. <laughs> now Vasquez will walk it up into the front court. Once in a while, you do get to interact with some of the coaches here right. at the scorer's table. As Orman on the rebound. We had a couple of moments like that this season. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes coaches just get picked up <laughs> saying stuff that they probably don't <laughs> want heard over the uh, the airwaves here. But part of the luxury of, I guess, sitting uh, here on the, on the court, you get as, access. As Gibbs now going to travel on the block. And it looked like he might have traveled a, a second earlier as Coach Peelan wanted to call initially. But... Regardless, got the foul call. Now DeMarco's in the game for Hunter, and he'll walk the ball up for the Hawks. Hand off back to DeMarco. Gives it up top to Heavey. Low getting hounded inside by Orman, and that'll send Low to the line to shoot two, and it's just going through the motions at this point. This, guy, this is going to be like the game going forward, you know. Both teams being aggressive, but if we have a foul at this point, it will be nothing but free throws. And the clock stops. I just see Lowe missed that last free throw. The ball just can't fall for the Hunter Hawks right now. And it's going to be tough to out-rebound ASAP Charles at any point of the game coming in at 6-9. Their tallest play out there right now is 6-5. And both with Charles and Orman. Yep, and Orman able to finish back door. Now Pat Salas and now Vasquez has it. Looking for options and Michael Richards all over him. Back outside to Vasquez. Not a lot of movement off the ball here for the Hunter College Hawks. Looking for options. It's going to be Heavey driving into the lane. And I think he got stripped. My view was a little bit blocked there. But Takino will have it into the front court. Gives it off to Gibbs. Looking inside. It's Ormond outside now to Richards. Richards looking for options. That option will be Charles. Right hand hook. No good. Ormond on the rebound. He'll get to put it back up. Give me a delay game foul on, on Ormond as well. I do not envy the refs at all at any level of college sports, or any level of sports really at all. Nice shot there by Vasquez from the free throw line. And you hear it from, if you're not doing well for one team, you're doing well for another team. If you're not doing well for the team you were just doing well for, and then you're hearing it from the other team. I mean... And if you're not hearing it from either of the teams, you're hearing it from the fans. So it's like <laughs> you're hearing an unwinnable situation just to, you know, get through your game and head out. Yeah, they have a very tough job out there in the court. Orman now gets tied up. Ball's loose. It's stolen by Heavey. Nice play there. DeMarco trying to go coast to coast. Can't finish with the right hand. It'll be Richards on the rebound. Richards inside to Orman. He's able to lay it in. And Nate Orman having six points now off the bench, having a solid game. Six points, two boards, and four minutes on three of three shooting. Vasquez now, ball moving quickly around. That's up top. It's Pat Salas straight away three, a little short. Off the shoulder of Richards. Goes back to DeMarco. It's knocked away. Nope, it just lost, and it'll go back to Baruch. Brandon Otley and Matthew Bantis check into the game. It'll be Gibbs and Zacchino who come to the bench. Otley run point guard duties as he brings the ball up. DeMarco on him at the half court. Spin move. He's quickly double teamed with Vasquez on the help. 
Richards gets the ball stolen from him by Vasquez. DeMarco ahead of the pack. He should have an easy lay-in, and he does. Almost four minutes remaining here in the ball game. You see the men's players are doing all that they can. They're taking advantage of the minutes that they're getting. As you see right there, DeMar DeMar DeMarco being aggressive there on that last layup. And if you're both coaches, this is the time where you're looking at some of these players and seeing for Coach Elise, you know, how, how bad do these guys, you know, want to get seconds. work their Three way seconds. into the into the lineup, you know, or into the rotation. And then if you're Coach Peelan, you're trying to figure out if these guys are guys that are going to help you win maybe more so than the guys that you have currently in the lineup. Right. Brook leads 71 to 44. It's 27 point lead here for the Bearcats. And a st steal there by Bantis. Oh, he loses the ball on the spin move. And Vasquez tells, uh, you know, pretty much showed Baruch what they were going to do with the ball right there. And with that spin move, uh, with that almost blind pass right into the hands of Bantis. Low now to DeMarco. DeMarco's going to drive baseline. Nope, he'll curl back out. Heavey, left wing three, NBA Ragey knocks that one down. 24 point lead for the Bearcats. And Baruch are gonna turn things over. It went off of Voss Potts or, Bant or Orman last, and it'll go back to the Hunter College Hawks. Jamal, you know what I've noticed about a lot of the Baruch wins here at home, and obviously we don't get to really see the home games, we more read about the away games, Right, is the, the Bearcats seem to always do their damage in the first half. I mean, how many games have we seen where it's almost these same five guys, whether it be Otley, Richards, Gibbs, some of the guys that maybe don't get a lot of minutes, Orman, who will get more minutes as their careers here at Baruch go on, right. close out games mostly because of the fact that they're winning by so many points, and it's like they just get it done in the first half. You're talking about a 14-point lead at halftime. Like, even that is tough to come back from if you're the Hawks or any team, but against, especially against a team like Baruch that's going to continue to score and continue to put the pressure on. But that, that starts at the top. You know, the coach draws up a great scheme and a great game plan. The assistant coaches help gets the team prepared, and everybody works together as a collective to put out a good product. As you can see, the Bearcats. They usually take care of opponents here in the first half, especially in a lot of their home games. And they allow, they afford the opportunity for other players to get involved. As you see, the majority of their bench players are out there on the floor. Boss Potts, baseline jumper. No off on that one, rattles around. DeMarco quick to push the tempo. He's been impressive since he's come on, Benny DeMarco. Danny, De, uh, yeah, Benny DeMarco, excuse me. Now, Boss Potts has it, tries to give it inside to Orman. Orman wanted the call, and it, I mean, it was weird. It looked like he just, I don't know if he got his legs taken out or whatnot, but it's going to be a timeout for the Hunter College Hawks with a minute and 59 remaining. And Coach Peelan wants to, people to hustle up here. But a uh, couple of impressive players here on the Hawks bench, but Baruch really running away with things up by 24, 71, 47, minute 59 remaining. It's the second game of the CUNYAC Game of the Week doubleheader. It's the second game of the Battle of Lexington, and it looks like it's on its way to being a Baruch W. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. Hey, CUNY fans, do you need sporting goods? Models has provided exceptional service for 125 years, and to Jamal's liking, offers a 10% discount to all CUNY students, faculty, and staff when you present your valid CUNY ID upon your purchase. You got to go to Moe's. Models. I want that discount. 10% with my name on it. You'll just walk around and start saying Models for a 10% discount. I'm Models. just saying. <laughs> Free promotion, right? Yep. Give me my 10%. We good. There you go. So for Baruch, it'll be Voss, Potts, Otley, Richards, Orman, and Bantis. It'll be DeMarco, Vasquez. Low. Patsalis. And Heavey. Sorry, I couldn't see him in the corner. Patsalis now right wing. Has Bantis on him. Bounce pass inside to Low. Working on Orman. Able to turn. Go baseline. Kicks it back outside. No one's there. It's going to go into the first row. And the guy, <laughs> some guy caught it. 
didn't didn't know, just want to drop it immediately. Hey man, it's a he souvenir. Want, he want no parts of it, man. You probably asking him to come out on the court. He like, nah, take the ball back. I'm good. <laughs> Otley now give it over to Bantis, left wing. Ooh, nice move there. Bantis straight away three. I think everybody wants to get in on it now. Voss Potts, nope. Oh. Nice play there by Hevy as he hits the deck. Now Vasquez is going to push. Gives it off to DeMarco. Up back to Vasquez. Minute and 15 remaining here in the ball game. Right wing three from Pat Salas. No good. Rebounded there by Voss Potts. And it will be walked up by Brandon Otley. Inside to Voss Potts. Shot no good. Otley on the rebound. Ball still loose. It's off Baruch last, then it'll go back to Hunter College. 56.2 remaining. DeMarco will walk it across the timeline. Otley on him. And it's just, ooh. That's dangerous right there as Boss Potts almost fell on the legs there. It looks like a Vasquez, and it'll send. Vasquez to the line, so it's crazy. If you look at the stat box, Baruch only have two players in double figures. Andre Harris leading the way, 24, 12 boards, three steals. William Sixman, 10 points. But outside of that, it's been a very much a collective effort. Alan Villar has eight in 13 minutes. Orman has eight in eight minutes. Six minute, well Jack Sixman has 7 in 24 minutes. Page 7 in 26. And Zacchino has 4. Charles has 2. And Reese has hit a free throw to add another 1 on top of that. So 35 seconds remaining here in the ball game. Baruch will get one more shot off. And that should do it here at the Arc Arena, Jamal. Any, any big takeaways from this? Uh, not only just from the Battle of Lex, but let's start with the men's game. The men's game, the biggest takeaway is that the Baruch Bearcats, when they lose a game, they come back with a lot of firepower and they win the game. They don't suffer back-to-back -back losses. They suffer one loss and they get back to their winning ways as they had that tough loss against Brooklyn College. But now they're going to walk out of here victorious and start back on their winning ways. I think that's the most important thing for me. And I, I found it most impressive. I mean, we've seen teams come through here. We've seen arguably arguably the greatest player as there's a huge block there. That stuff's starting to get a little chippy underneath. A big block. And I'm not sure I really could see who it was. Uh, did you get a, a good layup on that or I mean a good view on that, Jamal? All I saw was a hand fly in there and somebody getting their shot swatted. Let's go back and take a look right here. Let's see if we can get you guys to see who was the culprit on that play. I think it's going to be on Voss Potts. Yeah, it's uh, Voss Potts on the block. Nice block there. And Ortman standing up for his teammate, which, of course, we'll give uh, talking to with Elisi because I don't think he wants any sloppy play there. Yeah, especially in moments like that. If you're, you know, maturing as a player and you're, you're having opportunity to get quality minutes out there, you know, moments like this, you know, you want to play with a lot of passion and emotion, but sometimes it can come back to cost you. Although this game is out of reach, it's important to remain, you know, keep your composure and not have situations where you're giving up three points off technicals. And Heavey knocks down only one of two. And Orman will come to the bench as Asaph Charles comes back into the game. And for Baruch, how impressive of, of his it is. Undefeated here at the Arc Arena. Only one game left. A chance to end the season at the Arc Arena undefeated. And for a team that is, you know, looking to do big things and potentially win a conference championship, this will do it here at the Arc Arena, but you got to love the fact that they make this place a fortress every night that they come here to play, and they really have become unbeatable here at the Arc Arena. When it comes to this home court, the Baruch Bearcats definitely take advantage and call this place home and protect it 
protected at all costs. They improved to on the season 11 and 0 here at the Arc Arena. And it all started with the aggressive play of Andre Harris in the first half. Andre Harris, monster first half, 16 and 9 in that first half. And it um, really speaks to him and speaks to the team how they didn't want to let this one slip away. You know, it's a lot of times you'll see this as a trap game, you know, where you may not, you may overestimate your opponent and look on to the next and best. And you got to be worried about that against Lehman as well because you're going at home against Kyle to Staten Island in a game that could decide everything, especially the seeding. You really got to make sure you're not overlooking maybe some of these lesser opponents in, in both Hunter tonight, which you didn't, and then, of course, Lehman on Monday night at Lehman. Right. You know, definitely with for the Bearcats, when you have these games that are coming up and they're maybe not the strongest team in the conference or you have winnable matchups, you definitely want to do everything that you can to put yourself in the best position to be victorious because they're going to have tough matchups like that Wednesday matchup against Staten Island here at, here at the Arc Arena, which is definitely going to be a very tough matchup for them. And they're going to have to play well in order to be able to find themselves victorious in their next two games. So a monster game by Harris, but what an all-around team effort uh, with the Bearcats. You're looking at a team that shot only 39% and only 15% from downtown. 62% at the line. Nothing really popped off the page, but then you look at some of the other stuff. Plus 12 in offensive boards. Plus 25 in rebounds. So just a, mo excuse me, plus 15 in rebounds. So just a monster game on the glass. And 24 turnovers from Hunter didn't do them any justice. No, that was definitely one of the biggest things for the Bearcats. Early on in that first half, they were able to cause many turnovers. I think they had 13 at halftime. But more importantly, the Bearcats, the Bearcats, 29 defensive rebounds, but 23 offensive rebounds, 52 rebounds on the night. And that's what really gave them this lead. It allowed them to have more offensive possessions than the Hawks. And they took advantage of the majority of them. So it got chippy at the end, but regardless, it's going to be a Baruch W, and they split on the night. So just to recap, the first game, the women's game, it, Baruch fell 74-43, to but they avenged their loss. The men winning 71-50. to This has been your CUNYAC doubleheader game of the week. This has been the Battle of Lexington between Hunter College and the Baruch Bearcats live at the Arc Arena. And you've had an opportunity to watch it all alongside Jamal Chapman and David Just on the home for all Baruch Athletics YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcat Broadcasting. Have a great night, everybody.